is the Big O Show. Brother, thank you. Thank you. What do you think about these gifts here, Sean? Is this what you got at the, they, they were giving the stuff out? Okay. Huh? Okay. All right. I like it. Sorry, they brought us some gifts here. Gifts take precedent. Yes. See how cool that is? Huh? Squared circle digest shirt. I got it. Oh, oh get off my notes. And I got a black one. Yeah, baby. We need to, you made these? Oh, I got them ordered. Wow. Okay. We need to start making them and selling them on the, on the site is what we need to do. That's what we need to do. All right. The great uh, Alan Poopar. Thank you, my brother. Appreciate you immensely. Frankie, you are, you are awesome, bro. Thank you. Great job, dude. Uh, appreciate you with the wrestling stuff, man. Making it better. Thank you. Uh, anyway, uh, there he is, the man, the myth, the legend, Alan Poopart. How you doing, baby? You feeling good? Yes, sir. I think I'd feel better if the Dolphins had a first-round pick, make tonight a little bit more interesting, but such as life in the city. Dude, they're trading up for Jameer Gibbs, didn't oh, you hear? Yeah. Or Dalvin Cook. Yeah, that's right. I forgot. Didn't you hear about that? They're trading up for Jameer Gibbs. Come on. You know, you know, you know Chris Greer really well. He trades up for running backs all the time. All the time. He pays for running backs all the time. He trades picks for running backs all the He does this all the time. So you're expecting Jameer Gibbs or Dalvin Cook to be traded to the Dolphins today also, right? For a first-round pick, yes. Hashtag, hashtag sarcasm. No, it's like, I, I think I wrote, I wrote this yesterday or whatever on alldolphins.com. It's like, if they didn't take Jonathan Taylor or one of the six running backs they could have had at their disposal in 2020. That's a great one. I mean, seriously. Dude, that is awesome. That's a fantastic point. Yeah. I just go by habitual. Correct. This is who you are. This is you tell me all the time. You go cheap at running back. Mm -hmm. You you you're more you're more worried about the offensive line than you are the running back. Correct. You will draft linemen. Like crazy, but running backs? Oh, bro, they're seventh rounders. Or that, you know how Dalvin? I've said this. You know how Dalvin Cook ends up here? He gets cut from the Vikings, and he takes a three, four million dollar deal here. Correct. But if he wants eight, ten million and a multi year deal, he's not playing in Miami, dude. That's it. it. Completely agree. By the way, you know, you know what other team also doesn't necessarily believe in spending. High draft capital on on the New England Patriots. No, I'll give you another team on running backs, and rather they're very big on building their their lines, offense and defense. And oh, by the way, they've been very very successful and just went to the Super Bowl. Oh, Philadelphia. Yeah, yeah, that's right. The Eagles pound the offensive line and the defensive line every year. And you watch tonight; they're going to pick either Skaronski right. from Northwestern or Jalen Carter if he slides to ten. You'll, that's what they do. Right. It's what they do because that's where you win. Correct. That's where you win. The yep. line makes it, you know, it, it's it, it's the weirdest thing. Like four and a half yards of carry wasn't good enough for you on a line that was all right. Can you imagine if you actually improve the line? Like Mostert and, and Jeff Wilson will be even better. Yep. I mean, what, what, the the I don't understand why the running backs are such a problem when they weren't a problem. Because they're not sexy. Yeah. It's it's the yeah. shiny it's shiny toy yeah. syndrome. Dalvin yeah. Cook's a shiny toy. Jameer Gibbs, who most draft every draft analyst compares to Alvin Kamara, is sexy. Dijon Robinson is, you know, like right. supposedly would maybe the best prospect in the, in the entire draft. So he's sexy. Raheem Mostert and Jeff Wilson, while highly efficient in twenty twenty two, are not sexy. No, that that's that's uh that's an excellent point. That's uh that's exactly what's going on. Um. Are are you are, are we expecting anything with said possibly in days two or three? If anything happens with said, it's day three. It's not day two because they're not getting anywhere near a late round pick. My guess it's going to be you get a six for a Wilson and a seven or something like that. If a team has not been able, which needs a receiver, hasn't been able to get anything in the draft. That's how I could see it happening, and I don't think it, you're going to see it happen until Saturday. Okay. What's your gut telling you right now at 51? I, I know I'm being completely unfair, 
because the first round hasn't happened. Uh, so I'm putting you in a really difficult position because uh, you'll have a better feel after you see the first 31 guys taken, and then you'll know. But um, your thoughts right now, what are you feeling for the Dolphins at 51? Here's what I'm feeling. It's I'm going to go against the, nor- the grain. I'm going to say they trade down for wow. two th- for two thirds. So they have three thirds. Okay. Right. All right. All right. That's interesting. You think after some of the uh, uh, analysis you've done, you think there's not a lot of drop off between the second and third round players? Is that is that kind of well, at fifty one at fifty one of the second round into the third round? Because obviously, if you're at thirty three, that's pretty good. No. That's probably right. better. <laughs> but but you're so you're feeling the fifty one players kind of the same thing you're getting at. 65 and 75 it's not but the level isn't such the difference isn't such that you're not better off with let's say let's say they're two seven point seven point three players instead of one seven point eight player well i think the dolphins need to to build up like a, a supply of young players on cheap contracts to counteract all those high price guys they have it's actually a very good point that is very true because that's how you got to balance it out because uh, fortunate for them, unlike past years, they're actually hitting on more picks, which means you're going to have to pay more people, which means, as you know, they're not going to be able to pay all those people. Because I was just that's the I was just having this conversation with Marcel, like the people that won Derrick Henry. It's like, bro, you can't acquire Derrick Henry. One, you have to give up a bunch of picks. Two, he wants a big ass contract after that. And you've got to pay Sealer and Wilkins and Waddle and Phillips and Holland, and you got a bunch of salaries coming up in the next two years, dude, that you're going to fork over a lot of money to uh, also, you know, these are things you're going to give up in the next two to three years. You cannot give up a Derrick Henry contract at this point in time. Just no, and, and that's on top of you, the, the players you mentioned, that's on top of those who already carry big cap numbers next year. Exactly. Like Ron Armstead, Bradley Chubb, Tyreek Hill. I mean, X. I mean, they have like eight players who take up like 160 million or something. Rob Hunt, bro, you got to pay. No, I mentioned Robert Hunt. Yeah, well, while you were listing the players, Robert Hunt, yeah. he's a keeper. I mean, I I don't know if they're going to keep every one of those. To me, Robert Hunt is an absolute keeper. Oh, for sure, please, bro. You don't hit on a lot of picks Correct. at the offensive line yeah, lately. Line. He Correct. you hit you hit on that one. You better keep. And he's a good dude too. On top yeah. of all, he's like he's the kind of guy you definitely want in your locker room, bro. Mm-hmm. Uh, plays yeah. hard and and keeps it loose. That's um that's a nice little combo to have. A guy that plays hard and keeps it loose. That is uh that's I think very very important overall. All right. Um, are we hearing anything on the Wilkins or Sealer front, or is that something that's going to happen? Or it looks like are you convinced that it's going to be more after June after the after the Byron Jones deal. Yeah. And I I'm like, whereas I once was, it's an absolute slam dunk that nothing gets done before training camp. Now I'm, I'm halfway thinking, is it possible that maybe they kind of wait and see how the guys fit into their, into their scheme. Um, and mind you, it's not just those two guys. Rick Juan Davis is, uh, is, is coming up as well. And Agba's contract is such that if he doesn't have a big year, uh, I mean, they might they might go away. I think he's and, gone next year. I think he's well, gone. So they, they're going to have a lot of decisions to make on the defensive line, and I don't think it's as automatic as extension sealer, extension Wilkins. I'm not saying it's not happening. I'm saying, and especially depending on what Wilkins' contract demands are, it's possible. Because here's the other thing with Wilkins: if they if they don't agree on 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 terms this year, and the Dolphins are like, you're not re- not being reasonable on your demands they still have the option of slapping him, slapping him with a franchise tag next year. Right. Right. They're in control. So sure. yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. And Sealer, you'll give him a contract, but it's not going to command that kind of money. So that one will be a lot more manageable at that point in time. Uh, well, we got some numbers here. Lamar Jackson's five-year deal makes him the highest paid NFL player right over Hertz. He got a five-year $255 million deal. We don't know how much is guaranteed yet. All right. Yeah, it's hard to get the guarantees unless the team gives it to you because Lamar's not giving it to you. So because he's the agent. <laughs> it's not fully guaranteed. That, that that we can pretty much agree on. Oh, I'm sure it's not fully guaranteed, but the, the apparently is it more guaranteed than what Jalen Hurts got? And I don't know, but the five two fifty five is exactly the same. That's the same right. the, the same 
contract that's on the surface hurts got hurts got what do you got yeah they're saying the jackson deal will be more money than what guaranteed uh, guaranteed but the first two years look to be structured to where they can make the trade for deandre hopkins Oh, so they all oh, so they're yeah. The, in other words, the, the numbers lower in the first two years of it. Yeah, that's what's being again thrown around. I don't know how much is what, but that's what's being thrown around. I better work because they're going to be in cap hell after that if it doesn't work. Like like the like the AFC wasn't it's already work, but whatever. That's just me. I'm, like I the AFC wasn't already enough of a bitch as it was. Jesus, man. Yeah, I don't believe in the kid as a passer, so it doesn't matter to me. To me, you can get all the receivers you want. He's not accurate. And uh, so we'll, we'll see. Uh, time will uh, time will answer all when it's uh, when it's all said and done. What'd you think of the Aaron Rodgers deal? Yeah, go Packers! They did well for themselves, uh, yeah. and yet they didn't do as well as they would have done had they traded him to Denver last off season uh, when Denver was jonesing for him as much, if not more. And they got one crappy season out of Rodgers, partly because. Seems to me half of him had already checked out, and the number two, he had the thumb injury. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm i still wondering how this whole battle with the New York media is going to go. Because sure. when he has those bad days, oh, man, you're not dealing with a bunch of people that just desperately need you to survive, like in Wisconsin, when there's only a couple of people there. You know what I mean? It's, this is New York, bro. They don't give a shit. And so, you know, I, I saw it was all rosy in the press conference, but I'm like, yeah, wait till you have a bad game. And then and then we'll see how this whole thing gets received. But Rogers is above is above it all. And he's going to find a way to slap back at everybody, even if he's not playing well. I, I, I think that's I'm not buying that storyline in the least, but to be honest with you, you, you think so you think he'll be able to handle it with no problem or you think he can just kind of um, sidestep it? Yes, he can start. He's smart, he's smart enough to where if they're they're pushing hard, they're pushing hard, they're pushing hard, they're getting on his case and all that. He's just going to be like, okay, uh, yeah. I'm not. Yeah, I, I, if he doesn't succeed with the Jets next season, it's not going to be because the media is getting to him. Okay. All right. What do you got going on on Sports Illustrated so folks can check you out, my friends? Well, we already have five stories up today. Um, is that it? That's it. It's well, I mean, we may, may have some more. Blacker. Things happen before the draft starts. We're gonna. Uh, you know, republish everything or, or repimp everything that oh, you, you already have your Jameer Gibbs or Dalvin Cook stories written, right? You're already just... written. It's just a matter of hitting post once the deal is made. Uh, the Wilkins extension story is already written as well, ready to go. Whole bunch of them. Um, I had to trash the Lamar, the, the Dolphins trading for Lamar Jackson because they're not. Yeah, what happened with that? Anymore. I thought he was coming here, bro. So I had to. I, I thought they were trading to, uh, to, to Baltimore. I thought that's what was happening. I had to command K that one. So, we had an interesting one. I don't know if you saw the little little viral video that, that that's circulating with Taylor Lewan. Um, I think it was Barstool Offices where he's running into a this mega fan who had a Dan Marino jersey on who was all depressed about everything. And Taylor Lewan basically told him, if you'll make, dude, Dolphins have called me. Right, yeah. 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 Like yeah. But you know what I said uh, was it yesterday the day before, because that whole Cameron Fleming thing. And it's basically the Dolphins are telling you we're going to get another lineman, yeah. but we've already checked with all the guys that are available. If we get the guy we like in the draft, we don't call these guys. But if we don't get the guy we like in the draft, then the Brandon shells or the Cameron Flemings or somebody's going or Taylor Luan or somebody's going to be an option. Clearly they have kicked the tires on all of them and they're waiting for the draft to decide on which one they're going to get now. That's yeah. it. Yeah, it's doing it's doing your due diligence, and it makes perfect sense that that they're bringing Cameron Fleming. Check him out, um, and it's interesting because my perception of Cameron Fleming was like, meh, meh, and then I checked. No, but I checked with somebody in Denver, and they like him. Who covers the team? He told me actually the guy was very much under the radar, pretty good last year, and he can play both sides. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they like him over there. He actually did a decent job. It, it, it's not a name that made me, you know, like oh, real, real sexy, but. You know, uh, you got to trust them. They they got to know more about linemen than. We hey, listen, man, what did we think about Brandon Shell? We're like, oh, just a guy, whatever. And the guy ended up doing a really good job overall. And I, I'm I'm actually shocked he's not here again. I really am. I thought he did a good enough job to bring him back. That was so I, I'm, I'm guessing it's coming down to dollars, or he's looking for a situation where he's got a clearer path to a starting job than here. 
Probably. That would be my guess. Probably. All right. Follow him on Twitter at Poopart NFL and catch his work there at Sports Illustrated. Alldolphins.com. You got to bookmark it. That officially makes you a Dolphins fan. All right. And don't be depressed if Dalvin Cook doesn't end up here. And- <laughs> yeah, we're, we're preparing you for that possibility. There's a very, very good possibility he's not coming here. Exactly. All right, Poopart. Hey, oh, by the way, we didn't catch you earlier in the week, so we'll catch you tomorrow night after the draft. Get a little recap from you. All right. Uh, if we if we can make the word the timing work absolutely yeah yeah we'll make it work you know we're flexible we'll make it work one way or another all right we'll catch you tomorrow night my man you be good right back at you you got it there you go alan poopart baby with our ejdconstruction.com my emma dolphins reports